everybody, Miss Hannah here, and it's time for some stories for bed. Bedtime stories. Are you ready to get set for bed? Great. I can't wait to read to you. So tonight, I have some good books that are getting us ready and excited for Thanksgiving. My first book is called Baking Day at Grandma's, and it's by Anika Denise, and it's illustrated by Christopher Denise. Now, baking day at Grandma's. It's baking day! It's baking day! It's baking day at Grandma's. Bundle up. It's time to go out across the drifts of snow. And it's been feeling kind of chilly lately, hasn't it, guys? Brrr. Time to bundle up. Past the pond so smooth and clear, little cottage drawing near. Knock, knock, knock on Grandma's door. Hear her pad across the floor. Plan to kiss on Grandma's nose. Cozy fire, warming toes. It's baking day. It's baking day. It's baking day at Grandma's. Pass out aprons. One, two, three. Grandma reads the recipe. Flour, sugar, butter, eggs. Stand on chair with tippy legs. Wooden spoon and measuring cup. Mix the batter. Stir it up. Fold it gently in the pan. Lick the spoon because we can, but not after someone else. You get, like, one person gets it this time, the next person gets it next time. It's baking day! It's baking day! It's baking day at Grandma's. Hop down from the tippy chair. Smell the sweetness in the air. Mmm, one hot cocoa at each place. Frosty window, smiley face. Can you see the smiley face? Yeah. Old time music, soft and sweet, skippy notes and tapping feet, learning songs that grandma sings when the kitchen timer rings. It's baking day. It's baking day. It's baking day at grandma's. Flip the pan and out it pops. Cut in squares and frost the tops. Add some sprinkles. Wrap each one. Tie a ribbon nearly done. Tasty treats and pretty bags. To each one marked with little tags. Coats and boots and hats and gloves. The hugs we know that Grandma loves. It's baking day. It's baking day. It's baking day at Grandma's. They're waving bye-bye. Walking home under the moon. Back to visit Grandma soon. The end. Did you like that story? I really like that story. So the next one we have is one called To Market to Market. To Market to Market by Anne Miranda, illustrated by Janet Stevens. Now, this is a song that my parents used to mess up all the time. They did it on purpose. It was the song, the little rhyme goes, To Market to Market to Buy of That Pig. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. My parents would just say, Home again, home again, jiggity jig. I didn't find out until I had my own children that it was a rhyme. But this person made a story out of it. To market, to market, to buy a fat pig. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. To market, to market, to buy a red hen. Home again, home again. Uh-oh, that pig left the pen. To market, to market, to buy a plump goose. Home again, 
Uh-oh, the hen's on the loose. To market, to market, to buy a live trout. Home again. Uh-oh, the goose was let out. Look at these animals making such a mess. Look at them. To market, to market, to buy a spring lamb. Home again. Uh-oh, away the trout swam. To market, to market for one milking cow. Home again. Uh-oh. Where's that lamb now? There's the lamb page. Oh, look at that poor lady. She's having a rough time. To market, to market to buy a white duck. Now the cow disappeared and I'm out of luck. Looks like she's having a really tough time. To market, to market for one stubborn goat. The duck flew the coop and the goat ate my coat. This is the last straw. I'm a shopping disgrace. Everything's running all over the place. She looks pretty sad, doesn't she? The pigs in the kitchen, the lambs on the bed, the cows on the couch, there's a duck on my head. The hens in the cupboard, the goose is there too, the goat's in the closet, and it's chewing my shoe. The trout's in the bathtub, this place is a zoo, I'm hungry, I'm cranky, now what will I do? To market, to market, to buy some potatoes, celery, beets, and some ripe red tomatoes. Some pea pods and peppers and garlic and spice. Sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to... There we go. All right. A round head of cabbage, a sack of brown rice, add okra and onions and one carrot bunch. Home again, home again. Hot soup for lunch. The end. I like that story. So, let's give it a try here and we'll read this one. <coughs> this one is called My Lucky Day. It's by Kiko Kaska. Kaza. I think I said that right. <laughs> One day, a hungry fox was preparing to hunt for his dinner. As he polished his claws, he was startled by a knock on the at the door. Hey, rabbit! Someone yelled outside. Are you home? Rabbit, thought the fox. If there were any rabbits in here, I'd have eaten them for breakfast. When the fox opened the door, there stood a delicious-looking piglet. Oh, no, screamed the piglet. Oh, yes, cried the fox. You've come to the right place. He grabbed the piglet and hauled him inside. This must be my lucky day, fox shouted. How often does dinner come knocking on the door? The piglet kicked and squealed, let me go, let me go. Sorry, pal, said the fox. This just isn't any dinner, it's a pig roast. My favorite. Now get into this roasting pan. It was useless to struggle. All right, sighed the piglet, I will, but there's just one thing. What? growled the fox. Well, I am a pig, you know, and I'm filthy. I shouldn't you wash me first? It's just a thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm, the fox said to himself, he is filthy. So the fox got busy. He collected twigs. He made a fire. He carried in the water. 
and finally he gave the piglet a nice bath. You're a terrific scrubber, said the piglet. There, said the fox. Now you're the cleanest piglet in the county. You stay still now. All right, sighed the piglet. I will, but, but. But what, growled the fox. Well, I'm a very small piglet, you know. Shouldn't you fatten me up to get more meat? Just a thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm, the fox said to himself, he is on the small side. So the fox got busy. He picked tomatoes. He made spaghetti. He baked cookies. And finally, he gave the piglet a nice dinner. You're a terrific cook, said the piglet. There, said the fox. Now you're the fattest piglet in the county. So get into the oven. All right, said the piglet. I will, but... What, 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 said the fox. But I'm a hard-working pig, you know. My meat is awful and tough. Shouldn't you massage me first to make a more tender roast? Just a thought, Mr. Fox. Hmm, the fox said to himself, I do prefer tender meat. So the fox got busy. He pushed and he pulled. He squeezed and he pounded the piglet from head to toe. You give a terrific massage, said the piglet. But, the piglet continued, I've been working really hard lately. My back is awfully stiff. Could you push a bit harder, Mr. Fox? A, a little bit to the right, please. E yes, yes. Uh, now just a little to the left. Tell me, how does the fox look? Very tired, very frustrated and angry. Uh, Mr. Fox, are you there? But Mr. Fox was no longer listening. He had passed out, exhausted. He couldn't lift a finger, let alone a roasting pan. Poor Mr. Fox, sighed the piglet. He's had a busy day. Then the cleanest, fattest, and softest piglet in the county picked up the rest of his cookies and headed for home. What a bath! What a dinner! What a massage! cried the piglet. This must be my lucky day. Do you remember the fox saying that in the beginning? Now the piglet is saying it. And when he got home, the piglet relaxed before a warm fire. Let's see, he wondered, looking at his address book. Who shall I visit next? He's got fox. He's got coyote. Who's left? Bear and wolf. Wonder what the piggy's doing. And the dirty little piggy shows up at bears. The end. So what I think piggy was doing was is he was doing that to all of the guys who thought that they were lucky who had a dinner show up on their door. Piggy keeps giving them smart reasons and wears them out. And then Piggy gets to go home with food. Smart Piggy. Now my last book for the day is called Thank You, O Moon. And it's by Oji Mora. Thank You, O Moon. This is a very beautiful book, so I'll try to hold the pictures up so you can see them. On the corner of First Street and Long Street, on the very top floor, Omu was cooking a thick red stew in a big fat pot for a nice evening meal. She seasoned and stirred it and took a small taste. What a delicious stew, Omu said. Tonight's dinner will surely be the best I've ever had. With that, Omu put down her spoon and went to read a book before supper. As the thick red stew simmered on the stove, its scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until 
somebody was at the door. When Omu opened it, she saw a little boy. Little boy, Omu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was bad when my race car down the hall when I smelled the most delicious smell. <sighs> the little boy replied, what is it? Thick red stew. Mmm, stew, he said. That stew sounds yummy. Omu thought for a moment. She was saving her stew for dinner, but she had made quite a bit. It would not hurt Cher. Would you like some? Little boy nodded, huh? And so Omu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Omu, the little boy said and went on his way. With that, Omu closed the door and went back to her book. As she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window, out the door, down the hall, toward the street, around the block, until somebody else was at the door. When Omu opened the door this time, she saw a police officer. Miss Police Officer, Omu explained, what brings you to my home? I was on duty down the street when I smelled the most delicious smell, Miss Police Officer replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Oh, stew, she said, and her mouth watered. That sounds mighty tasty. Omu thought for a moment. There was still enough to share. Would you like some? The police officer nodded. Mm -hmm. Once again, Omu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Omu, the officer said and went on her way. And so for the second time, Omu closed her, the door and went back to her book. And sure enough, if she read, her thick red stew scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, around the block, until... Again, someone was at Omu's door. This time, when she opened it, she saw... Which one of these do you think is going to be at Omu's door? A hot dog vendor! Mr. Hot Dog Vendor, oh, Miss Omu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block when I smelled the most delicious smell, Mr. Hot Dog Vendor replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ooh, stew. The vendor licked his lips. Mm, that sounds quite delectable. So Umu spooned some out, some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Omu, the hot dog vendor said, and went on his way. Throughout the day, people from all across the neighborhood knocked on Omu's door. She fed a shop owner, a cab driver, a doctor, an actor, a lawyer, a dancer, a baker, an artist, a singer, an athlete, a bus driver, construction worker. Even the mayor stopped by, and each time they knocked... Omu shared. Soon the sky darkened, the street lights brightened, and it was finally time for dinner. But when Omu opened her big fat pot of thick red stew for her nice evening meal, it was empty. Uh oh. Omu sniffled. There goes the best dinner I ever had. Sorry and blue, she sat at the table with her empty pot until... Who could that be? Omu wondered. When she opened her door, she saw... The little boy. The police officer. The hot dog vendor. The shop owner. The cab driver. The doctor. The actor. The lawyer. The dancer. The baker. Why, everyone she fed today was at her door. I'm sorry, everyone. Omu sighed. My thick red stew is all gone. I have nothing left to share. The little boy tugged at Omu's sleeve. Don't worry, Omu. We're not here to ask. We're here to give. The police officer carried in a fresh salad. The mayor entered with a roast chicken. The baker brought a collection of sweet goodies. And even the little boy presented Omu with something special in a tiny red envelope. 
Everyone who had knocked on Omu's door that day squeezed inside of her apartment, and together they ate, danced, and celebrated. While Omu's big fat pot of thick red stew was empty, her heart was full of happiness and love. That dinner was the best she had ever had. Thank you, Omi. The end. And while we can't be all crowded together in an apartment like we did here, there's nothing that says that we can't join together like you and I are doing right now on our computers, saying hello from all over the place. Call up that person that you haven't talked to in a long time. Maybe your Aunt Karen over in New York. Or call up maybe your cousin Tammy over in Kansas. Call a whole bunch of different people and say hello. Say happy Thanksgiving. Have fun. And I look forward to seeing you next time where we'll do some more good stories. And guess what? We will be reading special Thanksgiving stories next time. I can't wait. So until then, bye-bye. I'll see you soon. And don't forget to brush your teeth tonight and crawl into bed and have a good night's sleep. Bye. Bye-bye.